what's going on guys i just got back from having lunch with original dobo ken had a fun conversation hanging out with my boy clinton and ken today um decided to grab some seafood so i'm a little full right now as much as i want to start on this project that cecil just dropped off i just had a customer drop the scooter off saying that it's got that it won't start and oil is coming out of the head and as you can see it is definitely coming out of the valve stem you can see that that's where the uh, oil checker goes. This thing clearly has way too much oil in it. And that would tell me that it's probably not going to start. Um, so obviously with a project like this, good place to start. Drain all the oil out and start over. Somebody, I think, added a bit too much oil. So I moved all the bikes out of this side over to that side temporarily so that we can work on this project. I'm going to slip this oil pan underneath there now so it stops leaking all over that and let it leak into the oil pan for a bit and then I'm going to drain the oil obviously and uh, we'll see if we can get this scooter running. It's only got 1,850 miles on it so hopefully uh, it didn't run for very long with that much oil in it otherwise it'll cause valve damage and a whole bunch of other things will go wrong. So let's see if we can save this Lance 125 scooter and um, hopefully get it running again. So yeah, pull out all the tools, got the shop ready to roll here. Let's get started. I'm, uh, I'm gonna drain the oil out first and I don't even wanna turn the engine over with that much oil in it. I really don't, I don't wanna do that. Scooter's way too new to damage. Hopefully it doesn't hasn't already incurred damage. That is the hope right now. So let's get the oil out of there and uh, we will add some, add some oil. I have plenty of oil to go in it up here. Um, so we're going to start there, work our way up. Let's, let's get on this here. Oh my, there's way too much oil in this thing. Okay. Well, that's interesting. The oil filter stayed in there. What the fuck? What is this? Oh no, that's not good, that's not good, we have debris, metal pieces coming out here, oh come on, get in there, what the hell, there is so much oil in the scooter, so I just noticed when I took the spring off that there is a huge chunk of metal in here. interesting let me see if I can pop this filter off there we go oh boy yeah there's a whole bunch of metal flakes and stuff inside here not good that is uh it's definitely not good all right so if you guys can see that it's clean all the way through now all the shavings are gone I'm going to pop this back up and in there. Then I'm going to clean up that oil and we're going to add the correct amount of oil to the scooter. So, let me put that back there. Damn it. Put that there. Get all this hair out of here. Make sure we don't have anything to gum this up. Put some pressure up here. Come on, get in there. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's get this tight. All this oil off. All this oil off my tool here. Snap this back into place. There we go. Like that. Clean up the extra oil around here. Get the oil off all this. So this oil mess now. <sighs> I 
Okay. Let's see if this thing starts up now. Before it wouldn't start. That's how it was dropped off to me, wouldn't start. Let's see if it starts now. Is it dead as a doornail? Is that what's going on here? be honest with you guys this is a very unhappy motorcycle at the moment um yeah this this thing is not not happy at all so it's time to uh get a little more involved and uh figure out what's going on here with this bike it does not want to run good it's spitting lots of smoke which is a mixture of black and gray so it's time that we take this apart and uh, get inside here. Pretty sure this is going to require a 10 uh, for most of it. Oh gosh. definitely a ton of fuel on it so that explains the black smoke it is definitely got oil on it you can see it all see all that oil on there guys it's definitely got oil on it so I think at this point it's I'm gonna need to hook my compression tester up to it and see what the compression on this scooter is That really sucks. Hate it when stuff like this happens to a scooter with less than 2,000 miles on it. Oh, let's see if I have a head that'll fit this. Looks like I do. However, getting this on there is gonna be a lot more fun. up to this make sure the line is cleared and uh, let's go ahead and test this till the needle stops moving what do you say hundred psi
don't do that now. And now we're gonna do it the other way. 100, and so that's over, well over 60, 160. By adding fluid, I got more. So now let's do it the normal way, without the fluid. And that gets us 100. And if I add fluid, liquid. So clearly he has some ring issues going on here. That's uh, it's really unfortunate, man. I uh, I hate stuff like this. I'm not a fan. I don't ever like giving customers this kind of news. You know, it's uh, it's unfortunate. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that um, spark plug off of the wire brush here. Put my compression test away. I'm gonna grab a brand new wire brush here and. Clean this plug off and see if that makes any difference, but I, I doubt it. I mean, it's it's smoking. It's smoking a lot. It's not even cool how much it's smoking. We'll get all the crap off here. It's getting plenty of fuel, so I know that's not the issue. It's it's this is all coming back to just crumb, crummy, crummy. I mean, it's just burning oil, man. It's not happy. It is definitely not a happy uh, bike right now. So this thing is completely uh, clean now. I'm putting a brand spanking clean plug back in there after wire brushing it off. Looks real nice. Let's go ahead and slap this guy back in there. If I can get it in the hole there. Come on, there we go. back in now that it's cleaned off and guys I mean this thing should start run you know with that low compression that's that's gonna be our big issue here smoking pretty bad. That's full throttle to keep her going. Yeah, she's not a happy camper at all. Hi, right, what's up guys? Back to uh, day two here. I spoke with uh, Cecil, who's the customer. And I uh, told Cecil that it could be one of two things. Uh, either there's been some pretty catastrophic engine damage caused here, um, which would honestly really suck if that was the case. Um, but, you know, there's two things that this could be. There's either ring damage. I say that because of the amount of... of like metal shavings and shearings that came out of the oil, um, or there's valve damage. Now, I told him I would pursue this and look into it at cost, so he understands that I'm, I'm going into this with the knowledge that I have of, of things of this nature, where you overfill it can cause a lot of problems, and a lot of times it's in the valves, or it ends up really affecting the internal engine, the workings of the engine, in this case, uh, piston rings, stuff like that. Um, I can clearly see that the scooter is burning oil now and that needs to be addressed. We need to figure out why. So the question on, our, on, on his mind now is, is this scooter worth putting money into? Now, I'm, I'm a mechanic, right? I'm going to fix this if he wants to. Um, I'm going to pursue troubleshooting if that's what he wants to do. I'm only going off of my knowledge base of, of what these machines do, how they act, and what normally happens when you overfill an engine with oil. So the next logical step for me, um, after rings, just to be on the safe side, be absolutely positive before I give him the news like, hey man, um, this thing needs a whole top end rebuild and you gotta rebuild the valves. Um, ideally, you wanna check compression 
That'll tell you one of two things, either the rings are bad or the valve seats have gone bad from getting oil in them and or there's a, you know, they just need to be cleaned and readjusted. That could be the case too. And that's, that's why we're pursuing this next step. So I don't want to leave, you know, on, on, attended variables on the table here. We want to actually go in depth here and look. I told them if I do go deeper though, I mean, obviously time is money. I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm going to continue down this. He gave me the okay. I told him what I was going to charge him to have a look at the valves and see what's going on. If they need to be cleated, uh, cleaned, reseated, um, proper tolerances, then that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, the next step here is to remove, I, I'm trying to decide whether I want to remove the entire floorboard panel. Um, or if I just want to pull this piece of plastic in the front, I'm trying to figure out what's going to be easiest to get my tools in there. And it looks like I might have complete access by just pulling this panel here in the front, but I need to see how to do that. Every scooter is a little bit different. Um, so yeah. And if you guys are wondering about that chunk of metal that came out of there, that's it. <laughs> that was that big round chunk of metal that came out of the oil pan with a bunch of shavings. So that's never really a good sign. Oops, I guess my got too close to the scooter to turn my light on. There we go. By the way, these headbands are pretty cool. Um, yeah, they work great for this type of stuff. It's probably horrible for the camera. You guys are probably going to have a really hard time seeing what I'm seeing. But it is what it is. I can see this is already misting the plastic piece on the front. But this is also the battery tray. So, and by the way, this is both of these were Timu purchases. They have been excellent since I've been using them. Great for just saving tools and not having to worry about uh, silly, silly stuff here of losing tools and, and all that good stuff. So we're going to pull the battery tray because that's how you remove the front panel. So pull this battery tray off. See if I can gain access to the valve cover without having to take all the plastics off. That would be a huge plus, honestly. I'm loving this Lance scooter because it looks like this was designed to uh, come apart a lot easier than most of the scooters that I work on um, and give you access to things. There are some things I really don't like about it, like the gas tank sitting on top of the entire airbox setup. That's, that's not my favorite setup ever. I've definitely seen better, so. Perfect. I'm going to show this to you guys here so you can see that the tolerances are good. Come over here, grab this camera, and uh, you can see down in there while I move this, you can see that the it moves in and out fairly easily, but it is does have some drag on it, so that tolerance is like perfect not too crazy that's the uh, intake and the exhaust is on the bottom so I need to come down here and do the exhaust I'll try to zoom in so you guys can see that that's the exhaust down there so I'm gonna switch over <laughs> and then I gotta inspect the valve seats which is gonna be a whole bunch of fun let me tell you All right, well, the exhaust is a little tight. It's a little tight. I can get underneath it, but it is slightly tight. 
Let me just make sure it's not the uh, turning of the motor here. Just slightly adjust this just a little bit more to make sure. <clears throat> Yep, no, nope, that valve is set just slightly too tight. It has play, but it is a little too tight. So I'll uh, I'll adjust that valve real quick and uh, grab my valve tools. I will adjust that valve real quick and then I'm gonna have a really good look at the seats. All right, there, see, so I just got done adjusting your valves to 0 .004 and 0 .005 on the valve lashing. So these should be pretty well set now. Yeah, perfect amount of drag on the 0 .004 for the intake, and I just got done setting the uh, exhaust. Now I'm gonna have a look at the valve seats. I'm gonna turn the engine over and listen for any leak off off the valves see if that's what's presenting us with an issue here so we're going to turn the engine over <clears throat> from the flywheel side of things right over here got my socket set on it yeah I'll turn the engine over right there like so we're going to listen for any leak off Should hear hissing pretty soon. There goes the exhaust valve. Now the intake. There it is. That is too bad, man. Definitely getting some leak off on the valves. You can hear it. All right. Well, damn, man. All right, guys, I didn't show the whole tear down and piece back together, but I'm sure you understand. It was just a lot more work than it was worth, but that's all right. I want to get a scooter up and running if I can. So here is .004 in the intake with a little bit of pressure, perfect. If you guys remember, the intake was, or the exhaust was too tight. And now, as you can see, right there, if you guys can see that, Perfect amount of drag across there. I did clean the valve seats, redo the valve lash on everything. Now I'm gonna put it back together, see how it runs. All right guys, all back together again. Pairing system reconnected all the way across the board, how it should be. Everything should be perfect now. Let's, uh, let's see if after cleaning everything, if it starts up good and stays running. Please man, just run. I realize there's still a small amount of leak off on the intake, but, you know, it might be recoverable here. So hopefully with some wear and tear uh, and some driving, if we can get this thing running good, it will uh, flatten those seals out and reseat a little bit better. And then you just need a valve adjustment again. So hope for the best, plan for the worst. Let's go. <laughs> She is definitely an unhappy scooter still. It's crazy. Crazy. I'm going to look into a few more troubleshooting things here and see where we end up. Um, I don't think it's the CDI because it's firing. I don't think the timing is off. Everything seemed to be spot on with the timing. I did remove the uh, timing guide down here and make sure that everything was still lined up there. and. 
It was good though, the flywheel is very rusty. I don't know why the flywheel would be that rusty, but it definitely was. So, smells weird. It smells like it's burning weird. Like it still has a ton of, uh, I will say it's running better now at full throttle. At least I got it to, to handle some throttle blips before it would just chug out and die. So now it's handling some throttle blips. So that's a plus. Obviously reseating the valves a little bit did a, a much better job on this. Um, you know, just for schnitz and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and pull the carb. And I don't, I don't even think I'm going to charge them for this. I'm going to pull the carb and um have a look at the uh jets on this thing he said it sat for like two or three months i wouldn't think that would be long enough to create ethanol damage or anything but hey man you never know with these things you know i don't see any cracks on the intake all the vacuum hoses still look good everything looks pretty much new on here but you know what it's it's worth just taking it off and having a look right i mean what's the worst that happens you know what i mean so yeah i think i'm gonna pull the carb and uh have a look at the carb here yeah it just smells so weird and it's definitely burning some oil still but i don't know this could definitely still be partially gas related as well so first thing i'm going to do is disconnect the uh, line that goes into the fuel inlet and i'm going to turn the scooter over because it's a vacuum driven system and see if fuel comes pouring out i want to make sure the petcock is working correctly so that'll be the next step you gotta troubleshoot these things in the proper manner. So I gotta come all the way down here to where the uh, fuel goes in the bottom down here, which is really annoying. This is gonna be annoying. So anyways, let me uh, take a little bit of time to pull some stuff off here. And I gotta definitely pay attention to the routing guide of all these lines, cause there is a ton of vacuum lines going through here. Each one plugs into a different spot, so. Like, I don't even know where the hell these would go. This obviously goes to some kind of emissions control pairing system. These new scooters, man, they definitely have a lot of bull crap on them. That should be tucked up there somewhere. I don't even know why that's down there like that. So, but, uh, yeah. So I need to turn this sideways because the fuel inlet is right there on the side. And I need to figure out which line that is. I think it's actually this one. I think that's the fuel inlet. Looks like it is from here so I'll pop that off and we'll turn the scooter over we'll see if gas comes pouring out of there and then I'll have to remove the whole carb to have a look at the bottom of it so that's the next logical step here